circuit of a classical uh, a stable multivibrator made with two Darlingtons on the World Wide Web and in radio books and books of the 1950s, 1940s, 1920s. You can see this circuit made with tubes, but now I made it with some transistors. And I did not make it with uh, two transistors, but four transistors. And the aim of that uh, say ID was to use a Darlington. So here a Darlington in the multivibrator. The first transistor and the second transistor act as a Darlington and the fourth and the sorry the third and the fourth transistor also act as a Darlington. That has of course many very very good and interesting properties. So I want to tell about that with my scope etc. Here is the schematic that's perhaps interesting to show. It's of course one of the most basic schematics in electronics. I don't have to say that when you are a little bit acquainted with electronics and say you see here the first transistor, the second transistor, you see here uh, the back coupling out of the second transistor to the first transistor via a capacitor. That capacitor is responsible for the frequency and not only of course this resistor and that resistor is also responsible for the frequency but anyway. On the World Wide Web you can find say many many uh, circuits of this kind and also a lot of more information. Say the mathematics in this circuit. Uh, that's not what it's all about. Here we have a circuit that works on 50 Hz or 60 Hz or even 300 Hz. It's a square wave, oscill square wave oscillator and I will show the waveforms how pure they are and especially uh, you can instead of that 1k uh, resistor here connect a coil. The coil could be uh, could have a DC resistance of 10 ohms. Of course when you will drive such a coil with a frequency say 50 Hz 300 Hz or whatever that will have an effect on the AC resistance of that coil. But anyway, wanted to show I wanted to show this very very simple circuit and here are the measuring results. I go from 12 volt to 20 volts and here are the frequencies. So you can see here that the say the supply voltage doesn't have a big effect on the frequency. That means that you can uh, also change these two frequency dependent capacitors 100 nanofarad here and 100 nanofarad here to a higher value say 220 nanofarad or 0.22 microfarad both of these two capacitors and then you will be on a lower frequency where this multivibrator will work. And I found that it has a quite good uh, square wave that has everything to do with the Darlington setup. So this is a Darlington, this is a Darlington. Uh, they both have an extremely high current amplification. That means that uh, they can be driven, both of these Darlingtons can be driven with a tiny voltage. That also means that 
uh, say the waveform in many cases at least uh, could be pure so uh, that's all that I wanted to tell here is the here are the pin connections and again uh, you can also use here a coil for instance for instance uh, uh, a coil to drive a um, say high voltage circuit in that case that coil has to have a DC resistance in the order of 10 ohms or 30 ohms and on the secondary let me make a small drawing on the secondary the ratio between the primary and the secondary here sets the voltage say when you have here 50 windings and here a thousand windings the ratio is 50 to 1000 thousand so when we send in here a voltage of say 6 volts um, the amplification factor is as far as I can see 20 so here on the secondary we have a much higher AC voltage and there are circuits on my YouTube channel and also on the World Wide Web uh, where you can say use this setup anyway so let's see what the circuit can bring this is the scope let's look at the waveform at first that's important always important switch off the lights a little bit and now we are on this waveform on 40 hertz you can influence that waveform by changing the capacitor values in this circuit now they are uh, two of them are a hundred nanofarad so 1.0.1 microfarad so when you make them bigger you go to a other frequency you go to to a lower frequency you can also set the frequency by lifting up the supply voltage now we are on 13.6 volts and I'm gonna lift up the voltage now to 24 volts approximately 24 volts and now we are on an other frequency it's 80 <coughs> 97 uh, uh, sorry 62 approximately 62 Hertz anyway of course when you change the value of this capacitor to for instance 10 nanofarad and this capacitor to 10 nanofarad you will get to a completely other frequency band I hope I can uh, demonstrate that this is a 10 nanofarad capacitor and I will only change now in this demo one of the capacitors so one of the capacitors is 0 0.1 microfarad the other one is 10 nanofarad so 0.01 microfarad let's see what happens this is what happens it has directly an effect on how the two transistors are driven so the pulse pulse ratio changes and that's completely logical because we have here that 10 nanofarad capacitor and here we have that uh, 100 
nanofarad capacitor. Anyway, so it shows how you can change the pulse pause ratio, so the duty cycle of this circuit. Uh, it can be changed with the uh, supply voltage and also by changing the capacitor values. Well, that was more or less all to tell. And uh, there are on the World Wide Web many other circuits that regard this setup. So in many uh, situations there is for instance here a potentiometer between the positive and the negative. It gives its voltage out to the second uh, transistor unit or the first transistor unit. And uh, that means that their bias is changed. That means that the frequency changes. Very important when you want to do that experiment. Always use a 1K resistor when you want to drive the base the basis of this Darlington or the base of that Darlington so for instance here you can use say such a potentiometer here always a 1k resistor to prevent that the potentiometer burns out and here that wire also a 1k resistor it's a little bit sloppy but I hope it's clear 1k resistor here to the base of this transistor and the base of that transistor and when you differ the values the waveform also gets another shape so a good circuit I think to do experiments with very very sturdy circuit because we use here medium power uh, transistors the BD139 is a medium power transistor though I have to say in my first experiments also uh, one of these transistors burned out I don't know why the biggest risk is always when you make a connection by purpose or not between the base of the transistor directly to the to the say the supply lead in this case the positive so that means when you uh, by purpose or accidentally make a connection between the positive here and the base here of that NPM transistor it will die directly without any sound and even the second transistor can burn out in such a case so be careful when you do these experiments always use here quite high value resistor say 220k or 1 mega ohm or 500k so 500,000 ohms etc etc thanks for watching